Welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman, the podcast dedicated to helping you build the business of your dreams and live the life you always hoped for with valuable and fun tips and info to make your life easier and more fun. And now, here's your host, a man who sprinkles metal shavings on his breakfast cereal just for fun, Jason Silverman. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. I'm your host, Jason Silverman, and I'm thrilled to share some time with you today. You know, two hours of snow blowing today. It took me two flipping hours to snow blow my driveway, and quite honestly, I can finally see the blacktop again, so I'm actually pretty excited. This, uh, this mini ice age we've moved into here in New Jersey is certainly something. Um, Although, I will say this, having an almost four-year-old daughter and an almost five-year-old, an almost four-year-old son, rather, and an almost five-year-old daughter gives me a completely different perspective. You know, I see the white stuff falling from the sky, and I think, ugh, work. You know, my daughter Tally and my son Noah think of it as a ton of fun. So, you know, I guess the lesson there is perspective really is everything, right? In any case, you know, this morning I looked at my calendar and I was so, so excited. You know, I get the opportunity to share some time with super, super smart people. And today is absolutely no exception. Um, today I get to share you guys with somebody who I feel is refreshingly fabulous. She's the real deal on so many levels, and you're going to see that immediately once this conversation gets rolling. You know, in my search to continually uh, and consistently bring both interesting as well as super beneficial guests, Today's show is right on par, and I wanted to introduce my listeners to somebody who plays the game full out and, quite honestly, has no problem doing it her way. Now, for the folks who I work with any of my coaching programs, my mastermind groups, or through Powerful Words Character Development, All-Star Cheer Sites, or Dance Sites Done Right, you know how much I focus on getting out of our own damn way and just getting it done, right? Well, this show is going to help you to do just that. So today, it's going to be my honor and privilege to share an amazing resource with you. You're going to love today's guest. She's professional, funny, smart, and she's not afraid to say it like it is. So strap yourself in. Today's show is sure to be a wild ride. As I'm sure you already know, I'm committed to helping business owners like you to become more successful, enjoy your career more, and in general, make your life significantly more fun. You know, we only go around once in this world, so let's do it right. All right, boys and girls, it's that time. I want you to stop surfing Facebook, put away your iPhone, your tablet, your cat, your dog, your child, anything that might possibly distract you from today's show. You're about to get some great and immediately implementable information, and I don't want you to miss even a second of it. So before we get rolling, oh, let me give you a little bit of background about our guest today. Nikki Kayat from Fancy Face Cosmetics is going to be with us today. Now, after attending Columbia College for Marketing and Broadcasting, Nicole went on to work for two prestigious companies, B96 Radio in Chicago and fashion megabrand Burberry. She's since completed her master's degree in cosmetics marketing and technical makeup application. As a longtime high school all-star and professional cheerleader, as well as a former all-star cheerleading coach, Nicole wanted to merge her knowledge of the three industries and created Fancy Face Cosmetics the world's only sweat-resistant makeup. She's a contributing columnist for Inside Cheerleading Magazine. You can find her beauty column in every issue as well as Twist Magazine up in Canada. Uh, Nicole was crowned Mrs. Illinois International 2011 and uses her title as well as her business, Fancy Face Cosmetics, to promote the Make-A-Wish Foundation as well as the Cheer for a Cause charity, which she has a lead role in as a member of the Global Advisory Board. Nicole is a member of the USASF Image and Appearance Council and will continue to help guide the spirit industry in an athletic yet glamorous manner. Nikki, welcome to The Real Deal. I'm thrilled to have you today. Hi, Jason. I am so happy to be here. Well, thank you. I know that you guys got slammed as well with this, uh, this fun white stuff, so oh we're all gosh. enjoying this. <laughs> I had to bury my, or unbury myself. It's crazy. <laughs> all part of the all right, hey, before we get started, for those who haven't really had the opportunity or pleasure of meeting you or hearing you speak yet, do me a favor, take a second, share your story with our listeners. You know, what are you passionate about? What makes you tick? Who is Nikki Kayat? <laughs> those are some difficult questions. Those are the hardest ones, I think. <laughs> um, um, honestly, um, anybody that's ever met me um, knows I'm kind of a spitfire. Um, a lot of people that do know me know that I'm kind of a loose cannon. So... Um, the things that make me tick were when I was coaching cheerleading, I was so frustrated with the fact that 
I couldn't find the same shade of purple eyeshadow. I know that seems petty, but I couldn't find the same shade of purple eyeshadow. I was responsible for like 150 kids at the time, and it was annoying to me to go to 15 different Walgreens stores to find this darn eyeshadow. So I'm like, how come nobody has ever done this? So I came home one day, and I looked at my husband, who was my fiancé at the time, and I was like, uh, I know you think I'm crazy, as it is, but I, you know, I'm really going to put the cherry on top of that. I have this idea. I know it needs to be different, though. It can't just be, you know, regular makeup. Um, and he believed in me. So I took about a year and a half, and we were able to develop, well, I shouldn't say we, we with the team of highly trained chemists. Um, Lord knows if I did it myself, I would have blown up the house. But um, we developed the world's only sweat-proof technology. So we put that into all of our formulas, whether they're liquid or powder-based, um, and we really just, you know, brought it to the cheer market. There was definitely a void in the industry, and we needed to do it. So here we are. That was four years ago. Wow. That's so you guys have, uh, have have certainly expanded and grown quite nicely in that time. So tell me this. Um, uh, one of the things that I, I find that is helpful to most entrepreneurs, because um, many of the listeners are, you know, some are from the cheer world, some are from the dance world, but many um, are not even in the after-school activity industry, and I, I want them to have some really cool takeaways. One of the things I always find is learning from other people's either challenges or mistakes um, in business and how they overcame them. So what would you say um, has been your biggest challenge with growing Fancy Face? Um. A couple things, actually. Uh, well, first of all, we've made every mistake possible. Um, so that's why you could really trust our opinion, <laughs> because we've done it all wrong, and now we know how to do it right. Um, but I think the the biggest mistake I made was um, not really giving myself and my staff the credit that we deserved. Um, I took a lot of really, really, really bad advice, and I put a lot of trust into people that I had always looked up to, um, and I thought that they would have the best interest for both parties involved. Um, but it turned out that it was very one-sided, and it took me a while. Um, I don't know if I was blind to it or if I was just kind of naive. Um, so recovering from that was really, really difficult. But, you know, it's super cliche. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> it really, really has. And it's brought our company back to where we wanted it to be. Um, we kind of lost sight of that for a year, and I'm disappointed in that fact. Um, but now that we're back, we are stronger than ever, and, you know, my team couldn't be prouder, and the products are just amazing that we're rolling out for this season. Um, so it's really it's really been a helpful process. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting that you bring that, that point up because one of the things that, you know, I've been speaking about a lot lately is, you know, you got to – you got to keep muddling through. I mean, the more often you can fail, the better. Um, and and most people usually say, well, "What the hell are you talking about?" Um, but realistically, you got to keep taking chances. And again, it's not what, what doesn't what doesn't kill you or your firm. You know, will make you that much smarter moving into the next iteration of whatever you need to become. So, Absolutely. Um, and if you look at any success story, you know. Steve Jobs, Mark Cuban, two of my idols, um, you know, they failed probably 25 times, you know, before they really hit what made them who they are today. And whereas Fancy Face as a company has always been successful from day one, and we're very fortunate of that, um, you know, we made a lot of rookie mistakes, and and now that, you know, we really have a handle on everything, it, it, it took hard work. It took Blood, sweat, and tears. And regardless if our makeup lasts through all of that, it really <laughs> did, you know. And people look at it from the outside and they're like, wow, you know, what a beautiful success story or what a glamorous job that they have. But, like, if they saw the inside of it, it's not glamorous at all. We do more math than makeup. It's crazy over here. <laughs> but that's 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 the secret of any success. Um, exactly. People people only see the, the end result. They don't see all the work. I, mean, I remember when uh, – you know, even with with powerful words, people are like, "Wow, you guys were an overnight success." I'm like, "Yeah, it only took us seven years to get there." Right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell easy. me this. Obviously, you had um, you had a, 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 you had access to a ton of advice um, as you got started. What would you say that? Um, what's been your best piece of advice that that you got, and and how did you parlay that into into better success? Um, 
would say the, the best advice I got was, again, this is so cliche, but it's so true. You really just have to stay true to yourself and don't second-guess things. You know, the mistakes I made were because I second-guessed what I knew to be right at that time. Um, so I really wish that I would have listened to that throughout now that I'm, you know, taking it back to the roots. I mean, that is more helpful than anything. Um, and the best part of, like, humorous advice I've ever gotten is work until, until your idols become your rivals. And that just fuels me every single day. I have a sign in my office that says that. Because, <laughs> you know, I always gauge my success, whether it was, you know, getting through college and things like that, where my parents, you know, were, are, to this day, the hardest workers I've ever met. And so I always gauge success by being more successful or, you know, getting that college degree and really achieving everything that my parents did. So when I look at this industry, whether it be the cheerleading industry or the makeup industry, you know, the people that I idolize in this industry, I really, I want to be their competitor. You know, I want to look at Max Factor and say, hey, I can stand on the same ground as you. That's a, that, that's a fantastic, it's a fantastic motivator. Um, and I think, you know, most folks take an opposite stance to that and go, oh, well, you know, those are just my idols. I, I could never, ever be them or be anywhere near them versus, well, why not? You know, when they started, they weren't them either. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> That, that's huge. What um, obviously we talked about, you know, the biggest mistake. Um, but tell me this: the you talked earlier about, you know, you made some mistakes um, and some of your rookie mistakes. Would you say that? How would you say that you were able to leverage that mistake? Because again, one one really neat thing about your story is that um, you've been able to take everything you've done, good or bad, and turn it into better success. So, what would you say? Um, what would you say was that biggest mistake, and what would you say um, it turned into? Um, you know, again, going back to the being naive, um, I really thought that an opportunity um, that was presented to us, um, I thought that, that that was going to be the key to the growth of the business, and really that was the key to the demise at the time. Um, Got it. And I put a lot of reliance on the fact that Somebody else, you know, could, whether it be sell this for us or put it out there to the public for us. Well, it got so big so fast that I lost the personal touch in the company. You know, I had 300 people working under me all of a sudden when the day before we had three. So <laughs> spreading ourselves so thin so fast was the biggest mistake we ever made. And so now that, you know, we've taken it back to the roots and, you know, really internalized the entire company we're able, not only myself, but, you know, our executive staff, we're able to have a hand in every single thing. We physically touch every product. We physically talk to every customer. You know, we're on the front lines again. That's so, well, you know, it, 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 this, again, is interesting because, again, um, everybody always worries, oh, my business is going to starve. I've got to do that next thing. I'm going to starve. I'm going to starve. But in reality, um, more businesses die from indigestion than they do from starvation. Right. So, it sounds like you know being able to get yourselves back in the game um, as far as really being invested um, has changed everything, or at least brought you back to where you belong. It really has, and you know, for a year or two in the middle, the business was absolutely fine. It was more we wanted more out of it, but we couldn't physically do it because we. You know, we didn't have access to our customer base because we were so far removed from it, which it was great. And I and the opportunities that we have, I, oh, my gosh, were amazing. And I'm so blessed that they were even presented to us in the first place. Um, but I'm a very, you know, hands-on person, and I'm very much a micromanager. You can ask any of my staff. I probably drive them a little nuts with it. Um, but, you know, I'm I'm glad that it's back to how we wanted it. I'd rather have, you know, a smaller staff would be able to do grander things than put on this front to the public that, oh, my gosh, you know, we're so huge and we're so amazing and we have all of these incredible partners and all of this staff. Well, what's the point if you don't have your personal touch on it? Then it's just like any other product, and that's not exactly. what we are. Exactly. Well, and that, that actually brings me to my next question. So what makes Fancy Face different than any other firm who sells makeup? Because it sounds to me like you're a lot more than just another makeup firm. Right. Well, um, we are the only sweat-proof cosmetics in the world. Uh, we own the patent on it. So we're very proud of that. Um, 
and that technology is put into every single product we have. Now, speaking in terms of the cheer market, we're the only company that offers a complete line of cosmetics. So, again, going back to when I was coaching, the only thing that was available in the cheer market for me was glitter, and that wasn't really my taste at the time. Um, that has since changed, by the way. I now like to mix it up a little. <laughs> but, um, but nobody offered that. And furthermore, the thing that's most important to us is the fact that our makeup could potentially go on five-year-olds. And now I know you said you have a four-year-old daughter or a five-year-old daughter. I've got a daughter who will be five in about a week, so yes. Yeah, so you know that you want the best possible products that she's using, whether it be the baby shampoo she's using or the food she consumes, things like that. So it's super important to us that we produce exclusively in the United States because then we meet all of the FDA standards and certifications. Now, I know that for a fact that we're the only company that can say that. Um, as far as, you know, the mass market makeup, we're really the only one that has a niche in the cheer and dance market, and a full line of cosmetics, which a lot of people don't know about us. They think that we're, you know, just a cheer makeup brand, but we do have your powders, your foundations, blushes, lip gloss, spray tans. I mean, everything it takes to look like a girl, we have it. So t tell me about that because that that's really interesting. And quite honestly, I didn't know that. Um, how many different business lines really do you guys run? Obviously, you've got the the all-star market, the dance market, stuff like that. Um, obviously, the I don't even know how you'd frame it or a standard makeup or <laughs> <laughs> we like to call it mass market. <laughs> okay. But um, the title of that line is uh, it's called Life, and it stands for Live It Fancy Every Day. Um, because regardless if you're an all-star cheerleader or a soccer mom or you're going to church, you should always you know kind of put your best face forward. Um, and we believe in the fact that it should be an easy process. You shouldn't spend an hour and a half getting ready every day. And I know that's crazy coming from a pageant girl. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every pageant girl is cringing right now. Uh, but we really want, that's why we made our products, you know, sweat resistant in that realm. Nobody wants to reapply their makeup all day long. So it really works for the businesswoman that leaves her house at six in the morning and has to go straight to her kid's cheer practice and then come home and cook dinner, and that's when she sees her husband for the first time, and you want to look beautiful for him. So, you know, just creating that ease. All of our products are heavily pigmented, so you don't need a lot of them, and you don't need a lot of it. So, again, you know, just creating that ease, whether it be in the morning or the afternoon, whenever you apply. Once it's on, it's on. Great. Um, tell me this. Uh, this is something that... <laughs> This is my initial challenge when I when I get into the cheer world, you know, from a website perspective, um, especially with a young daughter. You know, I was I was looking at all these things and I was look, going to these websites, and, and it's still one of my my biggest pet peeves is going to a website and not being able to discern whether or not it's a website for a after school activity for a child or a strip joint, um, because some of the, some of the stuff has just been inappropriate, and I feel like there's been there's been a negative image um, about the cheerleading industry in general. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because you, you have a unique perspective. You've been involved as a coach, as a cheerleader, and now obviously as you know a thought leader within the industry. Um, where do you come to this? So remember at the beginning when I said the people that know me know I'm kind of a spitfire and a loose cannon. <laughs> this is this is this is going to be where the cannonballs start flying. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Bring it on. All right. Um, I have a very strong opinion about this. First of all, the people that are typically commenting on this and the people that have the strongest opinions of it have absolutely no idea about the actual mm -hmm. cheer world and how hard these kids work. And they're too busy discrediting them for the hair and makeup and the dancing and the uniforms to actually focus on the fact that these kids bust their butts three, four, five times a week at practice Okay, and that's completely overshadowed by this negative image. That drives me crazy. So I will defend these kids till the day that I die. The flip side is, do I see a problem with all of that put together on somebody that's five years old? Absolutely. A combination of the big hair, the big makeup, the small uniform, the suggestive choreography as a combination, yes, I think it's an issue. I also feel it's the responsibility 
of the people that are teaching them, you know, to instill it from the beginning. You know, this is what happens on the performance stage. Okay, obviously you're not running around your kindergarten doing that, but I think it needs to be made clear to them from an early age that that's not what you do on a regular basis. I also think cheerleading is one of the only sports, and yes, sports, <laughs> that girls can be little badasses, pardon my French, but still look like a girl. So if it's a, if they have a little bit of glitter on and they have curls in their hair, but they're tossing girls, you know, their same size in the air, what what other sport can you find that? No, you're you know you're, you're so spot on it, and I, I got to tell you, like I I knew nothing about all star cheerleading, I really didn't. Um, and after visiting a ton of clients and watching some of the practices, um, my respect in general has grown exponentially. Like it is no joke. It right. is absolutely no joke. I mean, these are these are athletes. These are absolute athletes. So um, I hear you on that. Um, well, so and what, it's also. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. You know, I think the the uniform providers and the competition companies, and you know, I know us as a makeup brand, we take responsibility in that too. And I think, you know, even more so than the coaches and the gym owners, it's the parents. The parents need to also be parents. Mm-hmm. And. You know, as as a owner of a makeup company, obviously we're on blast all the time for it because of the negative image of cheerleading. But let me tell you something. When a coach calls us and says, hey, for my tiny team, I want six shades of glitter and I want bright red lipstick and I want, you know, five shades of blush and fake eyelashes, we've declined the account because that's not something we stand for. So do we believe in, okay, a little bit of lip gloss, blush, maybe some light eyeshadow? Yes, they're performing. They're on stage. They're under the stage lights. You want to highlight their facial features so the judges can see their facial expressions. Absolutely. But that over-the-top clown look, we don't stand for that. So, Well, that's actually, I mean, that, that truly shows the integrity of your firm. So that, that kudos to you for doing that. I mean, a lot of folks are so busy chasing the dollar that they sometimes forget the soul. So that's... And again, I, I'm not opposed to, I'm not opposed to any aspect of what they're doing, um, as long as it's all kept in check. Mm-hmm. Um, so, sounds like you're you're definitely on the on, on the same page there. I, I was expecting real cannibals. Come on now. Um, <laughs> well, I did swear on accident. <laughs> yeah, please. come on, accident. I know, I know better. All right. So, tell me this. What what's next for Fancy Face? Oh. Uh, we have some some really exciting things coming up. Um, we are launching this incredible new product that's going to revolutionize the industry. Again, like I said, whether you're an all-star cheerleader, you're a coach, you're the mom of an all-star cheerleader, you want to create ease. Um, we're going to be announcing it in a month, but I promise I will give you first access to it so you can announce it. Um, I mean, it, literally, it's going to revolutionize the industry. It's going to give you no reason to ever have to do anything else, literally. Um, We're also launching a jewelry collection um, that will be called Belmont and Austin, uh, which is kind of an homage to the streets that I grew up in in Chicago. That was the crossroad. Um, And then we have, like I told you before, we have the spray tan collection. We're going to be doing that in an instant bronzer. So the kids don't have to spray themselves like three days before competition and wait for it to set. They can spray it right before they take the stage, and then it wipes it off. So wow. We're very excited about that. Wow. So you guys are <laughs> – you, you stay busy. You definitely oh, yeah. stay busy. You're not, you're not resting on any laurels here. That's fantastic. All right. It is now time for our resource of the week. So tell me this. How can our listeners find out more about you and find out more about Fancy Face Cosmetics? Where can they go? They can visit shopfancyface.com. It's S-H-O-P-F-A-N-C-Y-F-A-C-E.com. And then they can follow us on Twitter and Instagram, both at Shop Fancy Face and on Facebook, just backslash Fancy Face Cosmetics. Fabulous. Okay. You know, I I always like to end um, my podcast with one really important question. Um, and it, it's as simple as this. If you could give the business owners that are listening to this podcast today just one solid piece of advice, you know, something that you've learned experientially, you know, to either help their business or, more importantly, maybe even help them live a better life, what would that piece of advice be? I would say you have to determine if you're 
a workhorse or a show pony. So it it takes the workhorse to be able to become that show pony. Um, you really have to put in the time and the energy, and you have to see the success of your business five years out. And then you backpedal and create your schedule of how you're going to get to that point. And once you can do that, there's no stopping you. I love it. I love it. Fantastic tips. All right, Nikki, thank you so, so much for joining us today. I know how busy your schedule is, and now after hearing that you're basically focused on world domination, um, <laughs> I can imagine how crazy that is. So I appreciate you joining us today and, and sharing some of your wisdom with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. All right, folks, that's all the time we've got for today. Thanks for tuning into The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. For more information about private coaching or to see if you benefit from one of our mastermind groups, visit us over at www.jasonmsilverman.com. I look forward to helping you achieve the success that you truly deserve. Until next time, let me leave you with this. Get out there and be the real deal. Set a goal, make a plan, work like hell towards it, and achieve the success that you deserve. Now's the time. Get out there and make it happen. Go get them. This has been Jason Silverman, and I hope you have a spectacular week. You've been listening to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. To access the great resources mentioned in the show and for information on coaching and mastermind group opportunities with Jason, please visit jasonmsilverman.com.